Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa, and today I will be covering binomial expansion and the FOIL method. Now, the, one of the basic concepts in algebra is working with polynomials and being able to multiply them. But for today, we're going to concentrate specifically on bi binomials because they're one of the more, one of the most popular or most uh, frequent types of expansion. So they deserve some special attention, and then we're going to, which will lead into eventually learning the FOIL method, which is a quicker way of of combine of multiplying binomials. So before I get into the of the FOIL method, let me do one example of. Uh, multiplying a binomial the old-fashioned way, or at least with what's known as the horizontal method. So say we had the example x plus 2 times x minus 7. Okay. Now what the horizontal method is, is it's pretty much a distributive method or distributive property method. So you're pretty much going to treat the second part of the binomial as one term or one lump sum and then you're going to take the first one and you're going to split it in two. So then now what that does is it allows you to distribute each term individually into the second like so. So if you were to write that out that turns into x times x minus 7 and then plus 2 times x minus 7. See, just like a distributive property, except you're treating the first term each piece individually and you're treating the second term as just one giant piece. Then after that, then it's just distributing normally and collecting like terms until you can't modify it any longer. So we'll do that real quick. So then x times x is x squared. x times minus 7 is minus 7x. 2 times x is a plus 2x. And then 2 minus 7 is minus 14. And you would collect like terms. It would be the middle two terms, which then the final answer would come out to be x squared minus 5x minus 14. And that will be your final answer. And then that's using what's known as the horizontal method. Now taking the same methodology of distributing properties or taking pieces and multiplying them into others, that's the basis of what's now called the FOIL method, which is specific for binomials. This horizontal method can be used for any kind of polynomial, whether it's a degree of 2, 3, 4, whatever. It can go up, to, it can go up into infinity. But this, then if you were to specifically do it for the binomials, then it's specifically called the FOIL method, which I want to go over right now. So, FOIL method. FOIL method is meant, it's, it's not necessarily an equation that you have to remember. It's really meant as a process that you can, it's really easy to remember so that you can do it in your head and then you can multiply binomials quickly and efficiently. It's not meant for you really to write out. So if you're learning in FOIL method for the first time, I would learn, I would write out the equation and collect like terms and do it like I want to do it right now. But after you do, you do it a, a certain number of times, uh, you would want to train yourself to be able to do the m some of the math work in your head and then that allows you to do the FOIL method really really fast. So I'm going to write it out in first the formula in letter version and then we're going to do some examples applying it. So the FOIL method if you were to have a pair, a binomial pair say in the form of A plus B times C plus D. And the A, B, C, and D are just numbers or any type of algebraic expression. 
And if you were to do FOIL, it's basically multiplying, or basically doing that the horizontal method specifically. You would do A times C, A times D, B times C, B times D. It's pretty familiar to the example that we just did, correct? So if you were to write that out in equation form, it would come out to be A, I'm sorry, it would come out to be A times C plus A times D plus B times C plus B times D. And then usually with binomials, it's the middle two terms that you would end up collecting or bringing together, and then that would be your final answer. Again, you can start off by writing out the uh, equation like I just did, or like I'm going to do in the next example, but I would advise you to, after a while, to be able to do half the work in your head, because then, then that's the whole point of the FOIL method, is to be able to relate to it quickly and be able to do cut out a lot, a lot of the legwork. So let me do one example, um, doing strictly the formula and writing everything out, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So, let's say we had this example. 2x plus 3 times x minus 1. Alright, and we're going to label this down here as A, B, C, and D. Please keep in mind the negative 1 at the end. Negatives always need to be taken into account and not forgotten. So let's apply the equation then. A times C is going to be 2x times x. A, A times D is going to be 2x times negative 1. B times C, 3 times x, and then b times d, positive 3 times a, negative 1. Now, before we add, of course, if we follow order of operations, we have to multiply all the little clusters together. So 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times a negative 1 is a minus, oops, minus 2x, 3x, or 3 times x is just simply 3x. And then finally, 3 times negative 1 would just be minus 3. We want to bring together any like terms. In this case, it's the middle two terms. So then it's 2x, a negative 2x plus 3x is just positive 1x. So then our final answer would be 2x squared plus plus x minus 3. And there's our final answer. And that's FOIL method with just applying the, equ the simple equation that we have at the top of the screen. Now we're going to take it up a notch by doing the same example with different numbers, but we're going to do half of the uh, math work in our heads. And it's just simple multiplication. It's just knowing which terms to multiply when. But you can keep the process the same for depending on no matter what the uh, what the numbers are. So let's do another example. Let's say you had the example 3x minus 5 times 4x minus 6. Okay. So let's do the equation in our head. I'll do it slow, so just follow along with me. First term on the left times first term on the right. 3x times 4x gives us 12x squared. First term on the left times second term on the right. 3x times a negative 6 gives us minus 18x. Second term on the left times first term on the right 
is a minus 5 times 4x, which is minus 20x. Finally, second term on the left times second term on the right, minus 5 times a minus 6 gives us a positive 30. Bring the middle two terms together. Minus 18x minus 20x gives us a minus 38x. And then I'm just going to bring the other terms down. Plus 30 and then 12x squared. And that will be our final answer. 12x squared minus 38x plus 30. And see, I cut my work in half just simply because I did, I did the mathematical multiplication all in my head. And it shouldn't be too, bi too big of a deal as long as you, do, you keep doing examples. Now I'm going to do one more just like that, just so you can get the hang of it, except now I'm going to do it using, instead of numbers as our constants, I'm going to use letters. Because that can happen a lot in math, is when you're not working with strictly numbers, you could be working, instead of with numbers, letters. So, say I had this one, x plus a times x plus b. So a lot of times when people don't see numbers, they get all freaked out because they don't know what to do. But you just have to know what is your variable, what are your constants, and then just treat it exactly the same. Um, in this case, x is our variable and our constants are a and b. So we'll just treat it exactly the same way. So let's do the FOIL. First term times the sec t first term on the left times first term on the right, x times x gives us x squared. First term on the left times second term on the right, x times b is bx. You can also write it as, x as xb, but typically you write the constant on the left side. That's just good math etiquette. Alrighty, second term on the left times first term on the right, that gives us plus a x. First term on the left times second term on the right, a times b, which is just a b. We want to bring the two middle terms together. a b x plus a x. Now, because they're letters and they're not numbers, we physically can't mush them into one number or one letter. So, but you can just write it as a quantity in parentheses. So because b and a are the constants, we'll just write it as a plus b. Because that's all we're doing. We're just we're simply adding them together. And they're both being multiplied by x. And then we'll just bring the rest of it down as is. A b on that side. And then we have x squared on that side. And there's our answer, x squared plus the quantity a plus b times x plus ab. And we can't take it any further than that, so then that would be considered our final answer. So then the more 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 uh, examples of FOIL that you do, the easier this is going to get, and then, the e and then the faster you'll be able to do it. But the goal is to be able to do the multiplication or the, the, the equation in your head and then just collect like terms on paper and modify it as far as you can. So thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you need any extra f assistance, please stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment over in Kupfrian Hall, room 200. And good luck in your studies.